Hi, I'm Dave Eucleson, and I'm here to talk to you about the psychology of excellence applied to intercollegiate student athletes. For 29 years, I was a sports psychologist for a Penn State intercollegiate athletic department, and I feel so much gratitude and fondness from from learning from so many coaches and athletes over the years. And really, I was an advocate to help student athletes be their authentic self. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the psychology of excellence applied to student athletes and share with you a little bit of some of the mental training skills and some of the stressors that maybe student athletes kind of fall under and how they can kind of like grow and be the best person they can possibly be on and off the athletic field. The first area I start with is really the psychology of excellence. And there's a friend and colleague here in Canada named Terry Orlick that I've learned so much from. And he's written a book in pursuit of excellence. And it just, for many years, it just has the foundation of work. And Terry says that no matter what your field is, in order to excel in athletics, sport, life, you have to be committed to what it is that you're doing and show enough self-control skills to be able to perform well under any kind of situation. The commitment. In order to pursue something that is really important to you, it requires the passion. The passion where I always believe the heart leads any kind of mental training. But then there's like the pride and performance, the intrinsic pride, the sense of kind of like getting after it and the drive and determination to reach goals that are really important for you. But then there's confidence and there's belief and there's focus and there's composure and the sense of resiliency that's required to be able to help you achieve the goals that you're setting for yourself. So it's just not like, okay, everything's gonna be perfect. I believe in myself. I need to be a resilient competitor and authentically be connected to the things that I'm doing right here, right now, and get the best out of myself. So the second part is self-control skills. And I draw on a good friend of mine who recently passed away, Ken Revisa. And he had a model of really kind of addressing self-control. It starts with self-awareness. Being aware of what you need from yourself, what's going on right here, right now. Really being attuned without thinking, per se. When you're aware of what's happening, instead of kind of like just kind of blocking things out, we develop self-regulation. skills. And that may be kind of like teaching athletes to be able to kind of monitor themselves, breathe, slow things down, regulate the high energy of competition and make it work for you. Thinking the right thoughts. It's not overthinking when you're actually performing, but it's having effective thoughts that help you kind of stay in the present moment. And just kind of regulating the composure aspect of things so that you are in control of yourself, of your performance, of your effort, and your focus. And it sounds easy, but it's a great model to kind of empower student athletes that they have the skills to be more aware and attuned. They have the skills to regulate themselves under pressure so they can be the best they can be no matter what the competitive situation is and control the controllables, which again is effort, your preparation, your focus, and your mindset for success. So within this model, on a daily basis, intercollegiate student athletes in general are high achieving competitors and they really wanna do well. And sometimes they get in their own way because they start overthinking, over trying, worrying about what coach is thinking, worrying about how they're going to perform, kind of like things that are outside this circle of control. So I really try and focus on in what we talk about a growth mindset, that learning is not fixed. 
And oftentimes, we learn best in challenging kind of situations. So there has to be this kind of like intrinsic love that no matter how well you performed in, in practice, that you're looking for some way to continue to improve. So I got this idea here of, I call it Euclidean. That's when I kind of get kind of like out there in the ozone. But it's yearn to learn. Is that in the growth mindset, there's this ongoing development as a person, as an athlete, uh, as a friend, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, there's developmental cycles. They were always learning something about myself and about how well I can perform. But oftentimes, athletes kind of like, you know, they're afraid to make mistakes. They're afraid to really look at the, what happened in competition. And instead of kind of embrace feedback, okay, so you messed up. How do you learn from the situation and continue to grow? So the yearning to learn is that kind of feed me, you know, it just, I, I can't wait to learn more, all right? What do we have to do the next week? How do I come to practice with the intent on preparing myself to go out and do battle and be the best competitor that I can be? So this is a huge area, the yearning to learning and not being afraid to make a mistake, but looking at mistakes as a stepping stone for future achievement. That's one of the little nuggets that we have. Then the idea about confidence and belief, that in order to truly be confident, you have to trust the preparation that you put into the pursuit of excellence. So the yearning to learn comes back in terms of confidence and belief. How do I kind of condition my mind so I can think effectively in any competitive situation? So within that, we kind of like develop focus, which is kind of like an interesting concept. A good friend of mine, Rick McGuire, has written a great paper, Skill of Focus. And oftentimes you hear coaches kind of talking like, focus, you, you know, focus, you got to breathe, you got to relax. Well, what is focus? Focus is more than concentration. It's like a, a, a nice layered lasagna. And you've got like the layers of the noodles and the cheese and the sauce and whatever you put in it, vegetables, but it's layered. And the idea of focus is maybe five things to think about. One, there's a time orientation right here, right now. What's the most important thing right here, right now that has got to help me kind of focus? Because sometimes we're in the past, worrying about the mistake, just miss this pitch. Right here, right now. And, you know, oftentimes in working with athletes, that could be part of it, RHRN. Two, there's a sense of positivity, positive self-talk. But it's just not telling yourself, oh, you know, be positive. No, you, you have positive body language, positive mindset. I'm going to affirm what it is that I want to occur. A third component of focus is composure. And that goes back to the self-control skills and just regulating yourself, handling my emotions, stepping into the situation and embracing the moment. But how do we kind of manage our emotions, our composure, so that we're poised under pressure? Then there is a component, the fourth, concentration. Focus on what is most important right here, right now. So if you're in a tennis match and it's four or five, you need to focus on winning this next point, winning this set. But where does my focus need to be? On the movement, the, the movement of the feet, watching the ball, but winning the point. So as things evolve within competition, you have to make sure you're focused on the most important thing. And then the fifth part of this lasagna is confidence is a choice. And how do you have the volition the willpower to think confidently under pressure. So sometimes we have to kind of reframe things and, and kind of be aware of what it is that our mind is drifting to and bring it back into the present. It's more than thinking positively. It's really kind of altering kind of like our, our state of mind and focusing back into the present moment because that's the goal is to help the athlete be the best competitor you can be. 
each pitch, each at bat, each inning, each game, if it's baseball, but applied to any kind of sport, be present in this particular moment right here, right now. Now, finally, as I kind of just addressing some of the mental skills, there's breathing, there's focusing, there's kind of coming into the moment. The number one thing over 29 years I found working with intercollegiate student athletes is this kind of like perfectionistic tendency we get in our own way. And I call it stinking thinking. and mental goo. I don't think athletes really intend to start letting their mind get the best of them or worry about worry, but so many start doing that and they're, they're kind of consumed with stinking thinking. And I remember years ago, there was this pelican, it was an oil uh, problem off the coast of the Gulf. And they had these pictures of these pelicans, kind of like had oil all over their wings and they couldn't fly. Well, you know, that's kind of like what mental goo is, is that we kind of get caught in this kind of stinking thinking and about, I can't, I won't, oh, what are they thinking? You're not present. So part of my skill is to teach them skills to be able to change the way they think wash off the goo and focus back on what's the most important thing my mind needs to focus on right here. Be a relentless competitor. You can do it. Trust your preparation. Step back into the moment, clear the goo, focus on the positive things that you expect from yourself and keep battling, keep dealing with the pressure. So in essence, we hear a lot about final thing grit and resilience. It's almost becoming a, a, a buzzword, but the reality is there's a, a great lady named Duckworth who has uh, done great research on this. And it's something that I pull back together in the psychology of excellence. Grit is this kind of tied to reaching long-term goals. It's kind of having a mindset at the beginning. Here's what I'm trying to achieve as a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, or here's what I'm trying to achieve during the season. And it's kind of like working hard to be able to get and achieve your goals, which is part of what athletics is about. But the resilience is the stick to it -iveness. It's kind of like that competitor from within. The, the mental toughness is part of resilience. But if it's a frame of mind, I can, I will, we can, we will, let's keep battling, let's keep fighting. It's tied to the motivation of excellence. But there's a distinction between keep after your long-term goals, get yourself back up. Just because you lost doesn't mean you're a failure. How can I draw positive lessons from this and keep putting it back into practice with a desire to keep getting better? And that sometimes there's a lot of learning that goes on in a loss that's a springboard for winning and being a champion. But this resilience component is tied to the positive thinking or, or overcoming stinking thinking is that keep battling, keep competing, stay in the moment and just do the best you can. But you need to be present. You need to be present in the rhythm and tempo of what you do and just go out and enjoy the process. So bringing this all back together, I'm just trying to give you a little bit in a nutshell about mental training and the psychology performance excellence. And again, these are student athletes, 18 to 22 years old. And when we talk about performance situations in athletics, that's one thing, but they're the same skills that help them achieve academically, help them achieve interpersonally, have their teammates, and, and enjoy the process of how they become a, a, a more well-rounded student athlete, and the lessons that they can draw afterwards 
about kind of the participation as a as an athlete carries over into relationships, uh, jobs, and things like that. So I'm always trying to deal in a holistic approach as an advocate for them to help them kind of you know see the positive ideas in the pursuit and keep the passion going. Because when your heart is leading the way, then it's easier to handle the stress of being an intercollegiate student athlete. So I hope there's a couple little nuggets here and appreciate the time and, uh, uh, and, and keep being invested and connected in what it is that you're doing. Thanks.